everyone, and welcome to our podcast. I'm really excited that you've decided to join us for this very special moment. You're about to receive some quality information regarding home care services for your loved ones. So get ready for your weekly insight of information, stories, and tips. My name is Rita Warren, and I am so happy to be talking to you on this podcast. However, before I begin my talk about my subject matter, which is being useful, uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I will be 77 years old next month. Uh, I have been married to my husband, Michael, for almost 51 years. I have two wonderful adult children. My daughter, Dana, who will be 49, and my son, Matthew, who is 46. Both of my children live nearby, um, so I'm very, very blessed about that. And they've given us four amazing grandchildren, three girls and one boy. Now, my husband was in the television business for 30 years as a writer, producer of situation comedies, sitcoms. In fact, he co-created the comedy Family Matters, uh, and his contribution to Western civilization is Steve Urkel, if you've heard of him. You may be familiar with that television show and that character. Um, so that's his contribution. He and his partner were also the head writers for eight seasons on the television show Happy Days, which is another sitcom you've probably heard of. Uh, and for, for quite a few years, he and his partner were responsible for the Friday night ABC lineup called TGIF. Thank goodness it's Friday. Uh, of all the sitcoms, four sitcoms in a row uh, of that night. So he was very proud of the shows he worked on. While he was working on the television business, I was busy serving on the board of directors of the church planting organization, nonprofit which focused mainly in Western and Eastern Europe and Russia, uh, and a smaller presence both in North and South America. This allowed me to travel quite a bit to many Western European countries and cities, and also three times to Russia, which was quite interesting. Now, I'm an extrovert, so I found many ways to stay connected to people and friends and family and acquaintances, people I worked alongside in the organizations I was involved with. To this day, I stay in touch with many of those people. But then Michael retired in his 50s because the television business and situation comedies in particular changed. So I had a husband at home more and that was a big adjustment. Learning how to keep him happy, spend time with him while still participating in my regularly scheduled appointments. For me, nothing had changed. It's just that now I had this man at home asking me several times a week to uh, go out to lunch with him. What was I doing for lunch? But we figured it out. That was about 20 years ago. And now we're basically both retired from what was certainly a more active lifestyle for both of us. Getting older will often do that to you, won't it? The hectic schedule is no longer either possible or maybe even not desirable. And a pandemic will definitely put the finishing touches on things like travel, or even in-person lunches for a while. It's all a big adjustment, getting older, less agile, more tired, a bit slower mentally and physically. Now I retired from my role as board chair of Communitas International in 2019. It was something that I was used to doing for almost 20 years. And so there was a big void in my life. And so I was faced with a question that needed an immediate answer. How do I stay useful? There are all kinds of interesting stories on the internet that you can Google about people who have changed the trajectory of their lives to find a usefulness they didn't have before. 
For example, there's the story of Anne Driscoll, who at 62 fulfilled a lifelong dream to go live and work in Ireland when she became the project manager of the Irish Innocence Project. There, there's also Alan Klein, who's 80 now, but when he was 40, he lost his wife to a very rare liver disease. Because of her sense of humor that carried her all through the three years of her illness, Alan compiled notes as to how humor was a therapeutic part of an illness. He made a study of therapeutic humor, as he called it. He counseled people, and then he wrote a book, The Healing Power of Humor, which is now in its ninth printing. Both of these people found ways to make themselves useful in the later years of their lives. Now, finishing well is something we should aspire to as we continue to age. And this is a decision you make something you have to actually think about, dwell on, because it doesn't just happen automatically or spontaneously. You have to work at it. You decide that you will be useful, large ways, small ways, and then you must go about each and every day fitting your life into that decision, making it work, in whatever way that fills it itself out for you. I'm a big fan of the Louise Penny Armand Gamache mystery series of novels set in the Quebec area. Gamache is the chief inspector of the Cirete de Quebec, the provincial police force for that province and city. A man who wins your heart and your respect early on in the first book. But much of the action takes place in the rural town of Three Pines, where we meet unforgettable characters that over the course of 16 and soon to be 17 books, you come to love and look forward to as the reader. One of the very creative and magical things that Penny does as the author is to quote other authors and poets throughout her own books. In book 10 of the series, which is titled The Long Way Home, one of the characters quotes Pulitzer Prize winning novelist Marilyn Robinson in her book, Gilead. And I'd like to recite this wonderful little quote for you. It says, I'll pray that you grow up a brave man in a brave country. I will pray you find a way to be useful. I'll pray and then I'll sleep. That quote, especially the phrase, I will pray that you find a way to be useful, really resonated with me. I spent a lot of time unpacking it and trying to understand what it meant for me especially as I was getting older, so that I could communicate what I was learning about being useful to those around me. Because much of my life now, since retiring from the board of my church planting organization, has consisted of teaching women's groups, both Bible studies and regarding the stock market, two areas I love to study and unpack for other people. And here's what I came up with. First of all, there are different levels of usefulness. When we're younger, we can do a lot more that involves physicality. As we age, perhaps that's no longer possible, but it doesn't mean we need to stop being useful. We just need to find a way to be useful differently. Everyone's situation will be different from others around them, but you know what you can and can't do. If you can't help paint someone's home or build a new ramp for a person recently disabled, what can you do? 
Maybe you can help purchase the supplies needed or be on hand to give bottles of water to those doing the heavy lifting. Take stock of the needs of your abilities and find where you can fit in. Don't just eliminate yourself at what you consider the higher, higher levels of usefulness and say, if I can't be useful in this way, I won't be useful at all. Secondly, be willing to be behind the scenes, anonymous, even if you've been used to being more upfront and noticed. People who work backstage, as it were, are just as vital and necessary as those who are on camera, if you will. In fact, in some ways, they are more useful because without them, the show might not go on. I'm reminded in the, uh, of the story in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, where four friends cut a hole in the roof of the house in order to lower their paralyzed friend down to where Jesus is speaking to a room full of people. Without their anonymous help, that man would not have been healed. Yet we never know their names or what becomes of them. The paralyzed man is healed by Jesus, walks out of the house on his own two feet, and we never hear anything more about the four guys who went the extra mile to get their friend right in, onto the floor in front of Jesus, because that was the only way they were going to achieve their mission. I've often thought that if this scenario happened today, the four guys would be taking a selfie with their healed friend and posting it on Facebook or Instagram. But that's not what happened in the first century. Instead, these guys were willing to be useful behind the scenes in order to do something amazing for their friend. They must have cared very much for him because they were willing to do what they needed to do behind the scenes and then leave quietly. Thirdly, being useful often involves small things as well as the bigger ones. As we get older, as I've said, our capabilities and skills may change, may prevent us from being useful in ways that we were used to years or even decades ago. So how do we adapt our usefulness abilities? We find ways to be useful, as the Marilyn Robinson quote tells us. Can you write notes to people and mail them? I think people still like to get cards or notes in the U.S. mail, especially since they become quite a rarity. If someone you know is struggling with a health issue or anything else, write a short, short note letting him or her know that you're thinking of them that you care that they're not in it alone. Can you imagine if things were reversed and you were the one with a hard issue to deal with and you went to your mailbox and found a handwritten note from a friend? What would that mean to you? Would it not cheer your soul? Would it not be useful? Or send an email or a text, anything to let that person know that they are being thought of. It only takes a few minutes, but the result, result is healing for the soul of another. Or maybe even making phone calls is your sweet spot of usefulness. Is there someone you can call to say hello, to check up on, find out how they're doing, to encourage? That's a fairly easy task. For almost anyone. Again, if you're hampered by less mobility or agility than you used to have, this is a way you can still be useful. You could be useful on your own or in teams of other people who have made a commitment to reach, reaching out to others where needed. You can take cookies or baked goods to people who have just moved into the neighborhood or are recently returned from the hospital and surgery. 
if baking or cooking is your skill set? What do you do well? What can you offer people in your community, your family, among your friends, and even if you're very brave, reaching out to strangers? Being useful is a gift that you can stretch as wide as you want. And the wonderful thing about it is that it is so flexible that you can keep tweaking it year by year, adjusting it to your abilities and needs as you age. Greek playwright Sophocles said, the most beautiful human deed is to be useful to others. So here's my challenge to you. Make yourself useful to even one other person today and see how you feel about life, about yourself, and about other people. I guarantee you, you will be a blessing and you will be blessed. Thank you so much for your time and attention and I hope you have a useful day and rest of the week. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this moment with us. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to visit our website, www.eldercaretexas.com and follow us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and our Spotify channel as Elder Care Texas.